There is something I always wanted to do in Japan, which was visit Nagano during the winter. This year, I finally had the opportunity to do this. So today, we are heading to Yamanochi, the northern part of Nagano Prefecture, known for its hot springs and Japanese onsen bathing snow monkeys. I'm just picking up some drinks before we head off to the snow monkey park. We just got our tickets. There were some ladies sitting down selling tickets for everybody. So if you're lost, don't worry. It's number 23 bus stop at the Nagano station. The bus from Nagano station to the Jikokudani snow monkey park took around 50 minutes and cost us 1,500 yen per person one way. I recommend checking the timetable and the up-to-date prices online as they tend to vary by season. We're finally seeing some snow this winter. Yeah, it's much colder here. It says it's a 40 minute walk to the monkey park, which isn't too bad. We have the right footwear for it. It is 800 yen per adult or 400 yen per child to enter the snow monkey park. You have to go down the Yumichi forest trail. Keep in mind, it is very slippy. You can rent some boots here. What, what did you see? A monkey underwear. It says beware escaping snow monkey. There is a live camera over here. They've moved it now, but it was showing the snow monkeys. Oh, no, there's monkeys. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. It smells like eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sulfur. Listen to me. If you come here when the snow is not fluffy and the temperature is above melting, wear good shoes. It is very slippy. Caution, very slippery. Have an eye. So if you think about coming here in trainers, just don't do it, it's too dangerous. To get to the snow monkey park, you have to go through the Yumichi walkway. This path is lined with trees, specifically Japanese cedar on the lower slopes and oak on the upper slopes. The cedar and the oak protect the valley from landslides and make your walk a lot more pleasant and mysterious. Despite this being the popular season to visit the snow monkey park, the walkway was fairly quiet so it was easy to take our time and appreciate the greenery. Oh, it's true though. Look at all that snow. We finally got to the fluffy snow and there's a good amount of it here as well. I kept checking the weather report to see if it's snowing and it always said, no, it's not, but th there is snow. Look, it's... It's so thick. Oh, what a beautiful area. Wow. I actually didn't realize we were gonna see this whole area. I thought we were just gonna see the monkey park and the monkeys. This is our first time seeing snow in Japan because Tokyo doesn't get much snow and it is very sleety, but there's fluffy snow on the ground too. you might notice that huge eruption of steam. That is the Shibu no Jigokudani geyser. A geyser is a type of hot spring that erupts. And while most erupt periodically, this geyser is special because the eruption of steam is continuous. As a country, Japan is a highly volcanic region. Because of this, there are increased risks. However, there are also benefits. The volcanic activity in Nagano creates the perfect conditions for hot springs, otherwise known as onsen. Okay, we have finally made it to the actual monkey park and it's 800 yen per adult. But I guess if you didn't want to go to the park itself, you could stay where we just were and look at the monkeys from there. But um, I really want to do it. I've come this far, I really want to do it. Thank you. The yes. There's some lockers here if you've got any baggage. Oh, it's a whole area. Wow, okay. The Japanese macaques are the only monkeys known to take hot spring baths. It's believed that this practice started in 1963, when an apple rolled into an onsen of a nearby ryokan, and a monkey went in to retrieve it. 
Finding the hot water pleasant, the monkey returned and eventually other monkeys followed suit. Over the years, the Japanese macaques in this region adopted a culture of bathing that provided them with warmth and stress relief. So we have made it to the main onsen area where the monkeys are taking baths. And it's adorable because the babies stick to the mothers. There's a lot of babies around here, isn't there? No. Little tiny, tiny monkeys. So I don't know if it was monkey baby season at some point, but they really do sit in the onsen and they groom each other. This seems like the perfect place for wildlife photographers, mm -hmm. doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it definitely smells like a proper onsen over here on the bridge. Some plants don't really smell like an onsen. The further you go down, the more that eggy smell, the sulfur smell comes out. If you do visit this place, don't just visit the onsen area because there are monkeys absolutely everywhere. And I was saying to John, they seem a lot friendlier than the monkeys we saw in Arashiyama. Those seem to be quite aggressive, but these are very calm and relaxed. And John said maybe it's because they are in an onsen all day, so they're just chilled out. They're right there. They don't care about people at all. You walk past them and they don't move. This is an onsen. Is it? Yeah, you can pay to bathe with the monkeys. I'm not gonna do that. I love onsen. And have a baby monkey scream in your face. Although it sounds like an amazing idea. Everyone can kind of see you. Okay, it's literally over there. But I can imagine that on a quiet day, it might be like an incredible once in a lifetime experience. I guess it just depends on the person, right? Would you do it? No. Do you wanna do it now? No. I've changed my mind, let's do it. <laughs> The park was created in 1964 as a response to the conflicts between the monkeys and the local farmers. Prior to this, during winters, the monkeys would descend from the mountains in search of food and wreak havoc on the local farmlands. The creation of the Snow Monkey Park has enabled the monkeys to have a safe area and today plays a huge role in the conservation of Japanese macaques. This was a brilliant experience and genuinely something that is unique to Japan. I think if you are someone who is interested in conservation, animal behavior, nature in general, or experiencing a Japanese hot spring, this region has a lot to offer. All right, we're making our way down. I think it's cool that even in this area, they label certain plants so you can find out more about them. This one has a QR code and this is a protected area of Nagano. So they're looking after this forest well. These trees are absolutely huge. The bus takes about 50 to 55 minutes, depending on traffic conditions. I fell asleep for most of the bus journey. It was a very smooth bus journey. Yeah. But I was She was a very smooth driver. Yeah, she was a very smooth driver. If like us, you are returning to Nagano Station by bus, definitely keep in mind that towards the end of the day, the queue for the bus gets very, very long. It's best to arrive early to buy a ticket and to guarantee that you will definitely be able to actually get on the bus. Okay, this is the dangerous bit. <laughs> it's like mud and ice combined. Okay, we made it down. Nagano is known as the birthplace of buckwheat noodles, so we couldn't leave Nagano without trying some soba. Oh my gosh, there is a person wearing a tank top. Ashley Council back to Tokyo is at 6.15, which is pretty good. I got the Yasai Tenzaru Soba, but without the fish in the sauce. This restaurant had an extensive menu, and they seem to be aware of allergies too. To make the soba set vegetarian, I asked for some soy sauce and seasonings to make my own soba dip, and I gave John the fish cake tempura. It's not really common in Japan to ask for changes to the menu item, so I'm really grateful to this restaurant for being so accommodating. The portions were very generous and the soba was delicious. The chef makes the soba fresh, so you can really taste the difference. <laughs> 